Hey, what's up guys? I'm just going for a walk because I got a lot on my mind. But um, the title of this video is gonna be when the world is on the brink of nuclear mutual annihilation. Why even bother prepping? You know, I was looking at my garage the other day and I got a whole bunch of bags of rice. I got a whole bunch of canned goods. I got freeze-dried uh, packages and bins. I got MREs. I got a whole bunch of spam. <laughs> I got medical supplies. I got guns. I got bullets. I got camping gear. I bought a bug out vehicle, a 4x4 Toyota Tundra 2022 with the air ride. I love that truck, by the way. But yeah, I got all kinds of stuff. I went out and scouted areas to go to. Um, I'm kind of fortunate that I have access to certain things. I won't get into the details, but I've already scouted out um, underground shelters that I could run to. There's places out in the hills here. I live in Nevada, so we have a lot of mines nearby in the Reno Tahoe area. I mean, the Sutro mine, which is not too far from my parents' house, um, the Sutro mine goes in, I think it goes in a, a couple miles into the mountain and then connects to a whole bunch of other mines. And it has natural water flows in the mines. So you have water. Of course, it's not airtight, so you'd be screwed with when it comes to air. So you'd be kind of screwed there. But you could probably survive the... A blast if you hide a couple miles inside the mountains in these mines but again what do you do about the nuclear fallout in the contaminated air what do you do I don't have any place that has um, air scrubbers and air purifiers and air filters in the event of nuclear irradiated you know oxygen or air molecules I don't have anything to um, defend against that So, again, my point is, why prep? Maybe back in the 1940s, when the nuclear bombs were just the size of Nagasaki and Hiroshima, you know, a nuclear bomb could take out a, a city of 30,000 people, and then everyone else outside in the rural areas could pretty much survive. But that's not the case today. Now, they have nuclear bombs that are in some estimates, 50,000 times more powerful than Nagasaki. I don't even know if you, if you can wrap your brain around that type of power. And these guys have, what was it, five, 6,000 of these? 6,000? Are you kidding me? That's, I can't even really wrap my brain around that. There's no place to hide. Not for a regular person, no. Um, I was watching that, that Joe Rogan episode with Tulsi Gabbard, and she was talking about how um, when Hawaii got that, that, that message on their cell phone, the cell phone that said, this is not a drill, there are nuclear uh, missiles inbound to the state of Hawaii, seek shelter, there was no place anyone in Hawaii could go. There was no place. There was no shelters you could go. The regular Joe citizen had nothing, nowhere to go. Maybe if you're lucky, you're already stationed on a nuclear submarine that could stand our water for, for an entire year before they have to come up for food. That's it. Everyone else would have been fried, burned. The air would have been polluted. The water would have been polluted. All the animals would have been dead. All the crops would have been fried. There'd be nothing to even enjoy if you survived and came out of that submarine that was hiding underwater. Where would you go? The skies would be burned red. The air would be irradiated. Food would be contaminated. Water would be contaminated. Everything would be fried dead. What's the point? What's the point? There's no reason for prepping at that point if you believe in uh, the nuclear threat and i know what some people are going to say oh don't even think about it you know what if it's your time it's your time you, you got to go there's nothing you can do about it why worry about it just live your life ignore it go to work 
have fun with your family, eat dinner, go on vacations, do whatever you do because there's nothing you can do about it. And you know what? I won't lie. That's kind of where I'm at right now. There's nothing I can do about it. <laughs> and I hate to be that way because I want to prepare. I want to do the right thing and take care of my family. You can pray. You know, if you, have, if you are a religious person, you can pray. But yeah, I mean, why even prep, guys? Why even prep? Again, one bomb, 50,000 times more powerful than Nagasaki. Even seeking shelter in NORAD or in a bunker underneath the White House would not save you because there's 6,000 of those. 6,000 of those. Oh, they would never do that. They're, I've heard people say this. Oh, they would never do that. How stupid would they be if they did that? Well, if you're Vladimir Putin and you're at the end of your life and you feel like, you know what, I'm going to die anyways. Um, who cares if there's a world left behind? I'm going to be dead anyways. He's getting older. Who knows what's going on with his health? Who knows, who knows what's going on with his, his mind? But think about it from his perspective. He's probably like, well, on one hand, if he's on the at the end of his life, what does he care if anyone else lives? He's dying. It's the end of the world for him anyways. He don't care. And if there are people that do survive, he probably wants to leave behind a legacy. And he wants to be the one who took out America. I, I could see that. I could totally see that. How do I know what's true and what's propaganda and what's false and what's lies? Who did what? You know, I mean, in a nutshell, Ukraine was the most corrupt country in the world just under a decade ago. That was universally understood. Ukraine was one of the most corrupt countries in the world. And we kind of forgot that Ukraine was extremely corrupt. By the way, it used to be a part of Russia, right? And then there's just propaganda that they were they're Nazis, pro-Nazi Ukrainian groups. That, that's got to be a bad look for them because it doesn't help their cause at all. No one's talking about that. Anyway, Russia goes in, tries to take it back and make it back into part of being Russia again or whatever. He wants to annex it and make it a part of Russia. And everyone's like, oh, no, you know, it's a sovereign country. You shouldn't do that. That's, that's wrong. But on his end, the propaganda is saying, no, it, it was Russia, and we're just taking it back. Again, propaganda would tell you that he is worried about NATO encroaching on, his, on Russian borders. All those other countries in between the West and Russia, it was like a buffer. And now that buffer's gone, and slowly and slowly, inch by inch, day by day, NATO seems to be encroaching on Russia. Why? I don't know. Why would, why do they do that? I don't know why they want to encroach on Russia. That's like if Russia was setting up missiles in Cuba, Mexico, and Canada. Yeah, we'd be shitting in our pants too. We're like, hey, don't do that. I try to listen to all different types of media sources, including just the internet and my own personal research. But in general, I'm at a loss because I don't know what's the truth anymore. Like who blew up? Nord Stream, who blew that up? Did Russia do it? Did the CIA, and did America do it? Did the Europeans do it? It's all theory, right, of who did what. Who blew up the bridge in, in uh, Crimea? Who blew that up? They don't know. Was it the Ukrainians? They're not taking credit. Was it the Russians? Was it Chechens? Was it insiders? Who, who knows, man? And then us, America. It's a proxy war. We're just like we did in Vietnam. You know, we're using Ukraine to fight Russia. We're giving them billions and billions of dollars. Again, one of the most corrupt countries on earth just under a decade ago. And now we're giving them billions of dollars to go fight Russia. But oh, not we're not fighting Russia. We're just sending bullets and rockets, drones, tanks, and whatever we're sending them. 
so the Ukrainians can kill Russians, but they're using our bullets and missiles and rockets. Not a good look. Not a good look. I'm sure the Russians are like, you just killed 60,000 Russian soldiers with American rockets. Yeah. You are at war with us. However you want to hide it, those rockets were American. The explosives were made in America. The technology used was made in America. And they killed Russian soldiers. And they're not going to let that slide. So, would not be surprised one bit if one day we wake up and we get a news blast saying, Putin did it. He used a tactical small scale nuclear weapon in the Donbass region close to Russia, but inside Ukraine. He did it. And now the ball is going to be on the West corner. What is, what does the West do? How do we respond? I don't know. I also heard someone say to um, a lot of people think that if they were to launch nuclear weapons at the U S they would not target cities like the news is telling you from a military point of view, they would not use nuclear weapons to take out populated cities like New York, you know, Chicago, LA, San Francisco, Dallas, you know, whatever, all the big cities, they're not going to use nukes to hit those targets where all the people live, just a regular non-military, regular U American citizens. They're not going to use the nukes for that. Someone said they would use the nuclear weapons on military targets and basically defang us, make us a non-threat. So they would take out NORAD and all the army bases and all the nuclear sites up in the Midwest and uh, basically any place that has a large military base and render us unable to fight with our military. That's where they would hit. So if you live near a big military base, yeah, you're, you're probably in danger. But if you live out in the middle of nowhere, like, like I do, <laughs> um, probably not as much as in danger as those other folks. And then once they take out those military targets in the United States, um, if we don't send our rockets to them and, and take them out and basically destroy the earth, if that doesn't happen, then they would hold us hostage and say, okay, we took out your military capabilities. You still have New York City. You still have San Francisco and Los Angeles and Miami and, and Dallas and, and, and Atlanta and, and Chicago, all the big cities. You still have those cities with people in them. You can either give up or we start killing civilians by the millions. Basically hold us hostage. That's what someone said, and I actually believe that, that that would probably be um, a tactic that they would use, because that's the tactic that probably we would use. Man. All right, I've, I've rambled enough. I just wanted to talk and uh, get my thoughts off my chest. Um, leave a comment below. Let me know what you guys think about this whole prepping thing. Do you think we should still prep? I think we should still prep for the normal stuff, you know, hurricanes, tornadoes, floods, earthquakes. Yeah. A week, two weeks, a couple months of no um, services, no ambulance, no fire department, no police, no electricity, no water. Take care of yourself until society rebuilds itself and gets back online. Yeah, I'm all for that. But as far as nuclear war goes, no. No need to prep for nuclear war. Not in my opinion anyways, unless you disagree with me. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you guys think. All right, guys. Take care. And hopefully this all gets resolved soon. Because uh, I don't know how much more 
people can take of this kind of stress. This is just nuts, man. Or maybe we just ignore it completely. Just ignore it. No one's that dumb to hit the switch. No one's that dumb. Ignore it. Just live your life. Keep going. Get up, go to work. Take the kids to school. You know, go to the movies. Go to baseball games. Visit grandma, grandpa. Just live your life. Because there's nothing you can do about it, right? Take care, guys. Stay safe.